My search for the perfect bicycle hitch rack has led me to the Yakima Dr. Trey, which replaces the Yakima holdup. And if you saw the review that I did on that, there were some things that I really didn't like about the bike rack, particularly the way the bikes contacted each other. There was no way I could get around that, even with the tray offset. At the end of this video, I'll talk about some of the other racks that I've considered and why I didn't go with them because if you're watching this video, chances are you may be looking at purchasing a hitch rack and trying to decide amongst some of the leading ones. The Yakima Dr. Trey has some really great features. The main one is the amount of separation between the bikes, which is what I've really been looking for in a hitch rack. And this rack is so close to perfection, but there's one thing that I wish Yakima would have done that drives me crazy. I'll show you that when we go over the rack. One of the best things that I like about this rack is how easily it installs and is removed from the hitch receiver of your car. It has this little wedge that expands with a knob when you tighten it. So rather than having a threaded bolt that goes all the way through that takes forever to tighten, you can just tighten the knob in about five seconds to have this thing secure in your hitch receiver. All you have to do is slide the rack into the hitch receiver and I've got it marked with some duct tape to know when to stop so that the holes align for the pen. You slide the pen in, which does not go all the way through, it just goes in the left side. And then you tighten the knob and it helps to shake the rack back and forth. And then once the knob is tight, you can lock it with a key and you know that it's locked when it spins freely. This is what the rack looks like when you have it folded up against the vehicle when you're not carrying bikes. And it's a little tall compared to other racks that I've used, but that's because of the amount of bike separation, which I'll show when I have the rack folded down. One really sweet feature about this rack is the fact that you don't have to reach underneath to grab a handle to raise or lower the rack. So you just grab the handle up here at the top. And I usually use two hands because it's a little tight. And you just squeeze it and then lower it down. With the rack down, you can see how much space there is between these trays. You can adjust the trays tools free by undoing these levers. So you can slide it closer or further away from another bike and you can slide it side to side. So if you had some contact issues with saddles and handlebars, you could move the tray side to side. It's highly unlikely you'd have contact issues with just two bikes. If you add a third bike, which you can do, then you'd probably wanna move the tray side to side to avoid any kind of contact issues. So like I said, Yakima does make an add-on so you could carry a third bike on this rack and the add-on would bolt in two holes here and you would just slide this tray forward so you would have three bikes. Because of the ease of offset with these trays, it would be pretty easy to carry three bikes and have them so they wouldn't contact each other. And the most common contact is where a saddle contacts a handlebar. So you should be able to get enough offset tools free with this rack. All right, let's go ahead and load a bike. So you just move the arm to the side and then just put the bike in the rack and then bring the arm over the front wheel. Then you secure the rear wheel with this strap and just slide it in here. And this is a really long strap, so you can use it for fat bikes as well. This button has been redesigned so that it's a lot easier to do with one hand. So you can just hold it down with your thumb and undo it with one hand. The older design was really difficult to do with one hand. You could do it, but it took some effort. So this one, secures really well and is really easy to undo. I found with longer travel bikes and longer wheelbases that you probably want to put this arm right up next to the fork so that it touches this cable retention device. That way the, the bike cannot rock backwards. And so that leads me to my frustration with this rack. Like the holdup, the rear wheel can hang over the back of the rack and the gravitational forces can really pull the bike down and cause the bike to rock backwards. It's not as bad as the holdup. It seems like the trays are a little bit longer, but I wish Yakima would, would have designed this like Thule, and that is with the longer tray so that the rear wheel holder will just slide back and forth instead of tilting backwards. And I'm not an engineer, but I would have designed this rack so that the tray would be longer and you wouldn't have that force pulling the rear wheel backwards. And that one design issue, in my opinion, keeps this rack from being absolutely perfect. It's not a deal breaker, and this is still a rack that I can actually recommend, um, but you still have that issue. Now, a solution that I would do, and that I'm going to do when I go on longer trips, or really any time that I go on the interstate, and that is put a strap either Velcro or one that just secures with a buckle so that I can hold the front tire down. That way the bike cannot rock backwards. 
So with the strap in place, the bike stays really secure. It can't really rock back and forth too much. And again, this only happens with a long travel bike. With a road bike, cyclocross bike, it's totally fine. Even my cross country bike, not really that big of an issue. It's just these longer travel bikes that have a longer wheelbase. So I went on a test drive and first of all, I put the arm about one inch from the fork. And Yakima recommends putting the arm one inch or less from the fork. And so you can see in the video when I did that and jerked the car from side to side, there was a little bit of movement. The front wheel rolled back and forth a little bit. It's not like it's in danger of falling off the rack or anything. Uh, it just moves around a little bit more than my liking. And then I put the rack right up next to the hose retention clip of the fork. So it's not really touching the fork. It would just touch that retention clip. And when I did that, there was very little movement. So the bike was uh, pretty stable, uh, did not rock back and forth, even when I jerked the car from side to side. So with the arm right up against the fork, it's secure enough for my liking. I still would use a strap on the uh, front wheel in case I was going to do a long trip, but just going around town, it's not worth bothering with it. Uh, the bike really holds secure with the arm all the way up against the fork. One of the issues that I had with the holdup is how close the button came to the fork. On this rack, the button's on the outside, so it's a non-issue, and you can see just how much space there is there. So this rack is good for plus bikes, fat bikes, and just regular mountain bikes, even road and cyclocross bikes. This rack has a pretty decent security cable that you would pull out of the tray, and it extends pretty long. I wish it were about an inch or two longer. Sometimes it's a little difficult getting it through the front wheel, around the frame, through the rear wheel, and attaching it. Sometimes you actually have to bypass the front wheel and just go around the frame and the rear wheel. And then you would attach it to the pin that holds the rear wheel tray on. If you wanted to add extra security, not just use this cable, but use your own, there is a point here where you can lock on a cable. This is what it looks like with two bikes loaded. And you can see, first of all, I've got the trays as far apart from each other as they can go. And there is just a massive amount of separation. Uh, the bar on my trail bike is a 780 wide bar. So that is pretty wide and you can see there is absolutely no way these can contact. So I don't even have to worry about offsetting the trays. Like I said, if you're carrying three bikes, yeah, then you would have to do that. But the cool thing about this rack is you can do it tools free. No need to use any Allen wrenches. Again, just flip up those levers and you can slide the trays back and forth and you can do it with the bikes already loaded. This rack will drop all the way down to the ground, so if you have a hatchback, you can access it without having to remove the bikes from the rack. So the same handle that will raise and lower the rack will have it go all the way down so that, again, you can access your trunk or hatchback. I don't know how far it goes. I mean, my car is pretty low, so it will touch the ground. If you have a higher SUV, I would imagine it's gonna stop before it hits the ground, but I'm really not sure. The Dr. Trey's arms will only go down to a 26 inch wheel mountain bike. So it's not really designed to carry a 20 inch wheel bike, i.e. a BMX bike, but my son races BMX. And so I've got to carry a BMX bike, but there is a way that you can carry one. So this goes outside of Yakima's intended use for this rack, but this works perfectly well. So I've got the arm all the way down and I've got the strap just to hold the locking arm onto the top tube of this BMX bike. And this thing is totally secure. It's not going anywhere. In fact, the front wheel drops pretty low in that front wheel tray. So it is really secure. And you don't have to use this strap. This arm actually stays in place very well. It's just for added security so the arm can't go forward. But this bike uh, will not move on the rack like this. So you actually can carry a 20 inch wheel bike. Again, it's outside of Yakima's intended use, but it does work. Unlike the holdup, this is actually a rack I can recommend. The bike separation is the number one feature to me. Also the tools free tray adjustment and the tools free removal from the car. Uh, with this rack, I can do what I've always wanted to do, and that is just pull the rack off the vehicle on days when I don't need it. I probably use a rack three days out of the week. The other days, just to save gas, just to keep it out of the sun, whatever. Uh, it's so nice to be able to pull this rack off because I can do it in probably 45 seconds taking it off the vehicle. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I want to mention a few racks that I considered in case this will help you. One was the Thule T2 Pro XT. Uh, one of the reasons I didn't go with that rack really is because my local bike shop is a Yakima dealer and not a Thule dealer. Now that rack does have pretty good tray offset. I don't think it's as generous 
as the, the offset on this bike rack. Uh, also, uh, the bikes are a little bit closer together, so you probably have to work a little bit more to keep the bikes from contacting each other. But everything I see about that rack is a really nice rack. It also has the tools free removal from the vehicle. Another rack that I heavily considered was the 1UP USA and based on a lot of comments that I've gotten on my channel, a lot of you guys use that and like it and it's an excellent rack. Uh, two things that kept me from that rack, one is you have to adjust yet with a tool uh, that bar that contacts the rear tire if you want to carry a smaller bike. So I carry my son's BMX bike and I might be carrying that on a Tuesday night for uh, BMX practice and the next morning carrying two bikes to work. Uh, so I didn't want to have to use a tool to uh, bring that bar closer to the tire. The other uh, reason is it's a little bit more difficult to get it off the car. You have to use uh, a keyed Allen wrench, um, which is still pretty, pretty quick, uh, just not quite as quick as the Akama. Another rack that looks really good is the Kuat Envy, and that is one that, uh, it looks like the bikes are a little bit closer than the Yakima, and I'm not sure how the offset is, so you can raise or lower the tray with a tool. Um, I, I like the tools free function of the Yakima, but that one you can raise or lower the front wheel to keep the bikes from contacting each other. I haven't tried it, so uh, I look for some reviews that really went into that. I couldn't find any, so it was a little bit of a wild card, but that also looks like an excellent rack. The Saris Super Clamp looks like a good rack too. It does have bars, and I don't like trying to work a bike around the bars. Um, it may be a non-issue, I don't know. Um, but that one also, I wasn't sure how easily you could offset the bikes in case you had contact issues. Now, I've been using the Yakima two-timer, and that's actually a really good rack. It does contact the frame. Uh, the, one of the reasons that I went away from that rack is because I always had to uh, adjust the wheel trays. So if I'm carrying my son's BMX bike or my 29er or my trail bike, I had to undo the wheel trays and kind of line those up. And it just got to be a pain because I'm carrying different size wheelbase bikes all the time. Also, the two-timer does not have a locking mechanism. You have to use your own cable. It doesn't have one inside the rack like the Dr. Trey does. So that will conclude my review of the Yakima Dr. Trey hitch bike rack. This one is a 1.25 inch hitch receiver rack. You can get it in a two inch receiver. You do have to specify there is not an adapter you can use because of that wedge feature. It's either a dedicated two or 1.25. It is a rack that I can recommend. So take the things that I mentioned in this video and decide if it's a rack that'll meet your needs. Any questions or comments that you have, leave them below. Thanks for watching.